It's absolutely all of those things. I mean, in terms of the article, it was Steve Bannon saying that um, that that the media um, provided the perfect foil to Donald Trump. The media set itself up as his antagonist. I mean, uh, across the board, you could hardly find any piece of of mainstream media that was supporting Donald Trump. Instead, it crafted this identity against him. Um, it was the thing that he was against. And that really provided, I think, enormous, it was resonated with, um, with something close to half the country. As for, um, as for me, um, well, it has been kind of curious that I went out, I did this interview, reported what the, what the man said, a, a man who is arguably the second or third most powerful person in the country or will be when the administration takes over, and uh, a, f a full range of journalists, most of whom I know, um, were suddenly, I, I don't know what they were, I guess they suddenly thought I was a sellout for talking to... Um, anyone in the Trump administration. Well, what does that tell you, Michael, the response that you got? Because it seems, I mean, granted, this is, this is what I've observed on Twitter, and I'm sure you've gotten many personal phone calls and emails on top of the response on Twitter, but it seemed like everybody who's responding to you is essentially saying you, you drank the Kool-Aid here, and how could you? And, and, you know, go be a journalist. You weren't hard enough on Steve Bannon. Which is, which is kind of extraordinary. Everybody is sitting home um, or standing behind a rope in, um, uh, in Trump Tower doing, as far as I can tell, nothing. I mean, they're taking um, uh, selfies of themselves crying. Um, instead of looking at this and saying, this is the most extraordinary story of our time. This is our opportunity. Um, and one of the things that we have to do is get inside and figure out who these people are, what they're saying. It is really kind of time to listen to these people. They won. And I don't, I know Michael, it's Brian Sullivan. I don't get it. I mean, listen, I mean, I'm, in, I'm a member of the media, so I'm not going to be some sort of hypocrite and sit up here and, like other members of the media, seem to lecture even other members of the media about what happened. It happened. Nobody connected. That's it. It is kind of interesting. It seems like the media is like a pack of dogs just chewing itself to bits right now. What does Steve Bannon think of this? He's, he's got to like it in a way, right? I, I, mean, he's I, a, I, think, he, I think he absolutely loves it. I exactly mean, he what he sees, wanted. He sees the media as articulating what they are against, and he sees the media as making it very easy to articulate what they're against. You just have to point at the media. You know, and he's right, but he's kind of right, though, Michael. Listen, I'm not going to knock my own industry, but if you flip through the Sunday talk shows this weekend, it's like six journalists all talking to each other, parroting the same stuff. I, I mean, I, yeah, totally, and there's a great example. So I was there last Tuesday. Um, I was in Trump Tower, spent all afternoon there, was watching what, what was going on. Conference rooms filled with people, Mike Pence going from here to here, Jared Kushner in the hall. I mean, this is a very organized, focused transition team. Article the next day in the New York Times, uh, transition is in disarray. Now, there wasn't <laughs> anyone from the New York Times there. I was there. No, they weren't. Disarray. There was no disarray. Then, this morning, it was... The transition has become a spectacle, a, 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 a strategic rollout. This is all the Times reporting this. Um, so what is it? Disarray, a spectacle. They have no idea. Why do you think uh, Mr. Trump met with the, the very representatives of mainstream media that, that Mr. Bannon uh, uh, opposes, basically? Wolf Blitzer, uh, Phil Griffin, Jeff Zucker... Um, why do you think he met with him? Well, I, I, I mean, I think, I think he's going to be the president of the United States. He's, he's, not, he's not fooling here. I mean, he is, he is doing it his way, but much of, much of the way he is doing it is, is what you got to do. You got to reach out to the media. The media is an important constituency. Um, it's, you know, he wants to look at them as much as they want to look at him. So it's like, why, why did he meet with, uh, with Mitt Romney? Um, you, he is, uh, he's the president, or he is going to be the president, and he wants, he wants it to look like 
he is going to be the president. Michael, I want to switch gears and talk about uh, the fake news problem. Facebook saying that it's going to combat fake news with a, with a bunch of various uh, initiatives. Uh, how big of a problem do you think this is? And do you think that it is Facebook's responsibility to fact check when it's simply, uh, you know, the, the aggregator, so to speak, of, I, of well, various I, reports? Is it um, up to the reader to decide what they believe? I absolutely think it's Facebook's responsibility to take responsibility. Whatever that involves, I'm not sure, but I think I think Facebook is a publisher. I think it should be held accountable for what it publishes. I think uh, we should be able to sue Facebook for what it says if what it says if is not true. Yeah, you know, it's interesting too, Michael, that I, I completely agree with you for what it's worth on that because this is, I, I don't, I had a long conversation about this yesterday. Do you feel like we have a fake news problem or a fake money problem? And what I mean by that is, Michael, the way that you get paid on the internet is you create some inflammatory thing, everybody clicks on it with Google's AdSense, et cetera, then they, you know, they pay, the advertisers pay Google, and then Google pays you. So the economic incentives is to just kind of come up with crap. I mean, just make something up with somebody's bold face name in the headline well, yeah, there are, and get there, the clicks. Yeah, no, totally. And there are actually two economic in incentives. Don't pay very much for, for the content you're creating and then get as much traffic as you can because you're getting paid by the click. There, there's also another interesting point about this. You know, in, in traditional media, advertisers, advertisers were responsible for what they were advertising against. That's, that doesn't happen now. Anybody can get advertising money. If you have traffic, you just sign up with Google and, and they'll give you ads. So anything, no matter how um, untruthful, tawdry, disreputable, or even in many cases pornographic it is, you can get an advertiser to support you. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.